Ciao everyone, I'm Rosella Rago and welcome back to this episode of Cooking with Nonna. I have my favorite Sicilian, non well one of my favorite Sicilian Nonnas, I have a lot of favorite Nonnas. Uh, back in the kitchen today, say hello to Nonna Angelina. Well, si, ciao a tutti. Eh, eh, Sono ritornata con Rossella, è stato un vero piacere. Uh, she's very happy to be back, she said. You, I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, you're very happy? Yes. Uh, what are we going to cook today? Now, today we're going to cook anellini al forno. Anellini al forno. Now, we're making one of the most quintessential Sicilian pasta al forno. Well, one of the most quintessential Sicilian baked pastas. Now, uh, baked pastas in Italy, I mean, they're, the list is endless. Exactly. The way yeah, you make yeah, a pasta yeah. al forno. There's not one way to make a good it's pasta al forno. Uh, lots of ways to do it. Lots of ways to do it. And this, this way is Nonna Angelina's secret <laughs> family <laughs> recipe, but it's not but, a secret anymore. No, no. Adesso ho fatto sapere a tutte. So if you're wondering what we were just saying about anellini, so these are anellini. This is a, a pasta that you could buy at most Italian specialty stores now. And uh, anellini means little rings. Yeah. Si, si. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And we are going to make them in a traditional Sicilian ragu with, uh, with a beautiful meat sauce and some peas. And let's go over the rest of the ingredients so everybody understands. We're going to start with our meat. This is veal, pork, and beef. But she says you could use any meat. You can use it, right? You can use olive beef, you can use olive veal. Yeah, a veal is good. Veal yeah. makes it taste good. Veal is very good. And uh, to flavor our meat mix, we're going to use a little bit of garlic, some plain breadcrumbs, some uh, pecorino. pecorino, some egg, a little bit of salt, and, and pepper. And That's pepper, it. of yes. course. Then we're going to come and we're going to make a sauce, a traditional red sauce. And we're going to do that with some onion, some peas, and some and crushed, tomatoes. crushed tomatoes, and a little bit of basil. Yes. And then we're going to like turn it up a notch and we're going to make a bechamella. Bechamella per metterla to, 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 to do in, in the anellini, to put in the anellini. Yeah. Uh, uh, you put a bechamella and uh, sauce. Bechamella and, and sauce. And meat. And meat too. So in lieu of a mozzarella, and you're probably wondering where's the mozzarella in this whole thing, there isn't any because we're using the richness the, of the bechamel sauce. Yeah. Now, if you don't know what a bechamel sauce, it is a sauce made made from milk, butter, uh, flour, salt and pepper, parmigiano, and a little bit of nutmeg. A little bit of nutmeg. So it is a white sauce, and we're gonna add we're gonna add it to our pasta forno for some rich creaminess. And everybody Very likes rich, this pasta yeah. forno. Yeah, everybody loves. When do you make this usually? Well, I make it uh, mostly in the holiday or on Sunday because uh, on Sunday is all the way my kids they come over for dinner. So this is a great Sunday pasta al forno. We're going to start right away with, what do we start with? We've got to start with the meat? With the meat first, so yeah. First we're going to mix the meat and then we're going to saute okay. in the frying pan. We're going to take our meat mix and I'm going to take my ring off, you know, just I'm going to mix the meat with my hands. It's best to do it with your hands. Yes, I do. Okay. I'm going to start mixing the meat. And what else are we going to put in the meat? The egg. Okay. I'm going to get the egg in here. If the garlic. Some of the garlic, just a little bit. And uh, bread crumbs. the breadcrumbs. The cheese. The cheese. Put a, you put take a F. The cheese. Okay. And we're gonna. And mix the salt this. and pepper. Excellent. The salt is right there. Very, very good. 
So this is kind of the same way you make meatballs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Vab. Now, can I go over there? Put the. Yeah, you could go wherever in. you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay. Wash your hands and uh, give me some oil. Yes, boss. <laughs> Some Botticelli olive oil Botticelli to olive oil. start sauteing our onion. Tell me basta. 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 We're going to make a little bit of sauce for the meat to brown it now. And we're going to use the peas and the crushed tomatoes to start this base. And why do you do it like this? Why don't you brown the meat separate? No, uh, but the onions taste better. Give it the taste of mm -hmm. the onions, and uh, you know it tastes much better in the, when you put them in the in the pasta. Mm -hmm. to put them in the oven. Okay, so our onions have colored just a little bit. Right. Now you put a little bit of crushed tomato. Okay. We've got our Botticelli crushed tomatoes. I'm just gonna put a little bit in here for her. That's it. That's a good. Yeah. Very good. Another piece? Half. Half. Half of the piece you want. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Salt and pepper. A little bit of salt. And some fresh black pepper. And this is going to give the meat a really tasty base to cook in. Now give me a couple uh, leaves of uh, basil. Break? Yeah. I like to break basil with my hands because if you chop yeah. it, it you gets black. You, exacto. Exacto. Es es propio così. Yeah. I never cut the basil. Never. Never, never. Ah, it already smells so beautiful. So we started to boil a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. Put it in me. Now you see this combination of like a ground uh, a ground beef or a ground meat cooked in a sauce with peas a lot through Sicily. And it just brings up a lot of the recurring themes in Sicily about Sicilian cooking, where it's the same ingredients used differently throughout a lot of dishes. Get our meat in there. And if this, this sauce looks somewhat familiar, it's because you've probably seen this in something like arancini. This is the same classic filling for arancini, the yeah. little rice balls. Arancini and the, and the gratto that I show you. Yes, and a potato, uh, kind of like a Sicilian shepherd's pie kind of thing, called a, a gatto. A gratto. Gratto. A gratto. So we're just going to brown the meat in this uh, little sauce that we made. And you want to break it up with a wooden spoon as you go along. How many pounds of this do you make on Sunday? Two pounds. Two pounds of meat? Two pounds of pasta. Two pounds of pasta, wow. Okay, Roselle, this is ready. Okay. Now you can, uh, we can do the sauce. If we put this Beautiful. in a different place. And we're going to okay. start our sauce now. Now get uh, some oil. Okay. The oil in here. Good? A little bit. Little bit. Uh, you want to cover the bottom of the pan. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now we're going to get our onions in here. Yeah. And those garlic. There's a little bit of garlic. And the rest of our garlic. Get this. The same spoon? Yeah. Okay. And now we're going to start making our sauce. And what's really interesting is that. The way uh, Nonna Angelina does it is that you see we put a little bit of sauce in the meat for moisture, primarily because that meat is so beautiful and moist. 
we're actually going to put a little bit of meat back in here and build our sauce with that. So the, the sauce has the meat flavor and the meat has the sauce flavor. See, it's a nice uh, combination. Combination. So it gets a little brown. A little colored. A little gold. We put a little bit of meat in a lot. Un poco dorato. Un poco, un poco dorato deve essere, sì. <laughs> okay. So we got, okay. Some, we got some beautiful color on our onions. Now you get a little bit of meat and put it there. Okay. Little bit of the meat. More? A little bit more, yeah. A little bit more. That's all. Oh my god, this smells amazing. You yeah, don't even know. Sauce. Get our yeah, crushed tomatoes. Yeah. Oh. Awesome. What do I do with this? Oh, put a little bit it. of water. Put a little bit of water. A little bit of water. Toothpick. Okay. So our sauce does look a little tiny bit thick, so Nonna is just gonna add some of the water, rinse out the can so you get that extra flavor. Oh, and we put the rest of our basil in there. And the rest of the peas. And the rest of the peas go in. Okay, now we put a salt and pepper. Okay, we got the salt right over there. Gorgeous. Okay. So now this just has to cook. Right. So we're going to boil. lower the flame to a simmer. And we're going to let this simmer for not too long. Because remember, this has to be cooked in the oven as well. So you don't need to cook it too, too much on the stovetop. Okay. Now we're going to move this right on over to simmer. And we're going to start the other sauce that we're going to be using today, which is our bechamel. Okay. And... She is going to show us how to make her creamy and delicious bechamel right now. So what do you want first? Butter and then the wooden spoon. Some butter. Okay. Now you're going to melt the butter down. Right. But don't burn it. Don't burn it. Now again, for the complete recipe and a full list of ingredients, please head over to cookingwithdona.com and we'll have everything written out and measured for you. So you want to stir the butter and flour constantly so it doesn't form any clumps. You want to really smooth it out. And she just adds a little bit at a time. And it's going to turn this um, kind of uh, almost brownish nutty color. And next we have some milk. Now, it's very important that your milk is at least room temperature or even a little bit warm, right? You like to warm it up before you do it. Not cold out of the fridge because if it's cold milk, it can kind of uh, harden the butter a little bit, and we don't want that. And bechamel, stir, stir, stir. You always got to stir. Yes, I have to keep it for the milk. Ah, and that is going to thicken so beautifully. Okay. Left? More? Left. So how do you know when the bechamel is ready? Well, it's going to be like cream. Like uh, not too, too soft and not too thick. Mm -hmm. And usually the rule is when it like coats the back of a spoon and you can uh, run, make right. a line. Nice and clean. The spoon has got to be, see? 
Yeah. I'll put them on milk. And this is going to add so much creaminess to our pastel cloth. Okay, the rest. Put it down. Okay. okay. And then when you finish off your bechamela, you want just a pinch of nutmeg, and this is going to really uh, make a nice flavor, a nice right. uh, nutty flavor. Now we're going to put the parmigiano. Just have the nutmeg here just in case. All of it? Yeah. Okay. A little bit of salt. Mm. More? Yes, sir. Okay. Pepper. And the nuts make. Un pizzico. Un pizzico. Right there. Very good. And look at how beautiful and smooth that is. Okay, that's it. Shut off the bell. Yes. So now we are ready for our annellini. Now, annellini, you would not think. But annellini take a very long time to cook. I was even surprised. <laughs> full time, like full cooking time is like 16 minutes. You know, so, tu, tu ci credi? Io ci credo perché l'ho fatto. I know, ma, but avete, uh, to look at them, you <laughs> wouldn't <laughs> think so, right? <laughs> right? So you don't want to cook them all the way through. You want to cook them about uh, right. 10 minutes or so. Yeah. So no, you, you can bite. Them. Yeah, well. I've done this too, and I have figured out that anellini need about 10 minutes when you are baking them uh, in like a pastel forno or something like that. Don't cook them half the time of the package instructions because that is still too hard. So, Nonna's just gonna dump it. Dump it in our boiling water. And we're gonna give this pot a quick stir. Now, like I said, these do take a very long time to cook, longer than you would think. So about 10 minutes is a pretty good cooking time for these. Um, they'll still be pretty al dente. So they'll still be a little bit harder than al dente. So after uh, they're at the al dente that you prefer, uh, just scoop them out. And we're going to run them under cold running water. All right, so our pasta is cooked, and we ran this baby under cold water just to stop the cooking process. And now we're ready to assemble. 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 What do we got to put first? First, put the sauce in the pasta. OK, so we're going to add some sauce to the pasta. OK, just to keep it nice and In the meantime, we can put some sauce in the bottom. Just a nice layer of sauce. And spread it good. <laughs> put a little bit more. A little more sauce in there. Sauce for you, some sauce for me. And now half the pasta goes in now. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna put the bachamela. Miss the spot. Okay. And now our meats. Ah, I cannot wait till this is ready. This is such an ultimate Sunday pa pasta al forno baked pasta that you would eat like in the in the fall, or the winter time. You know, when it's nice and cold outside, and you have a nice gla big glass of red Maybe wine. Big glass of <laughs> you like, red and I like your white. Uh, she doesn't like red wine actually. <laughs> she likes <laughs> she likes the white. 
Okay. Okay, wait. Pasta? Oh, I gotta wait. No, cheese. How could I forget the cheese? What's the matter with me? <laughs> okay. A little bit of salt. That's it. Now the pasta. And the rest of the pasta goes in. No. Oh, not I the wanna, rest? I want to do another. Oh, layer. you want to do another layer? Yeah. Wow. Three layer pasta al forno, okay? Usually you only get two. With Angie, you get three. <laughs> Got the bachamela. No, don't put the whole thing. You just leave a little bit for that. Yes, ma'am. Spread and nice, right? You gotta make it nice and even. Nice. nice and nice. Nice and nice. Okay. okay now the cheese. Ucajo. Ucajo. Ucajo de pecor. Okay, now. The rest of the pasta. A little bit of salt. Uh, I know. Yeah. I, I, you forget all the time. I forget all, I know. What I'm you? gonna fire you. <gasps> Fire me? No, I'm only kidding. No. I'm only kidding. That's it. Hey, you're the nonna. You, this is your recipe. So Angie has a son that lives far away, very far away, and every time he comes home, she has to make him his favorite things, right? Yes, I have to. Uh, Otherwise, come on. Uh, uh, otherwise, I don't feel I don't feel good <laughs> <laughs> if I don't make it the thing that he likes. Does he like this? Uh, uh, no, nah, he's not that crazy about. Not that crazy about it. What's the matter? He loves the pasta with fresh sauce and eggplant on top. Uh, who doesn't? You know. That's it. Now we put uh, the bachamel. Angelina's always cooking. So with the bechamela, you get all the creaminess, all the richness. You really don't miss the mozzarella, right? You no, don't even know. You don't, you don't even no, miss it. No, it comes so creamy, the pasta. You won't even know. Oh, my God. This bechamela smells like heaven, just so you know. That's it. Oof. We got to spread, right? Mm -hmm. So you gotta make a spread of nice. Nice and nice. <laughs> and if you notice, there wasn't like a whole ton of the sauce, the red sauce in here, because like I say all the time when I do a pastel forno, you don't want too, too much sauce because that's gonna make everything too wet. And then when you go and cut it, it's gonna, it, it's gonna kind of fall apart. If you do have extra sauce, Angie agrees with me, it you is. save it for when you reheat. Yes, and you serve yeah. it with the sauce. Yeah, okay. You put it maybe a little on top. A little bit. Yeah. That's it. Extra fork. Okay. Buono. Si, perfetto. Perfetto. Now we are going to cover this with some aluminum foil. And this is going to go into a 425 degree oven for about half hour. Half hour. You know. Angie don't, says. Don't put them in the top, but put them in the middle. In the middle rack. Um, and Angie always says until it like boils, until it bubbles a little bit. That's it. So we are going to bake this up and we're going to rest it. Rest a pasta al forno bisogno di un riposo. di riposo. Di riposo. So we're going to rest it also a little bit. And when we come back, this is going to be baked and beautiful and ready to cut and serve.
Oh my God, no, no. Look at this beautiful it pasta. It looks very good. Spinach, oh. I hope it tastes good the way it looks. <laughs> oh my God, I bet it's going to taste better than it even looks. But one thing, this is still very, very hot, guys. So this is really ideally something you make the night before. Well, uh, the, in the morning. In the morning when it's got a, a few hours to kind of set and come together. This is hot out of the oven. So I'm very excited about this because I've had fantasies about this exact moment happening. Nonna has given me her permission that we're going to taste it right from inside here. Sì. Si. Yeah? Ti do il permesso di fare quello che vuoi. Thank you very much, Nonna. Come on, who? Pure io, pure io l'assaggio così. Oh my God. You get to stick your fork right in the middle of one of these things? How awesome is that? Oh, look at that. Mm. Very good. Very good. Very good. And got a calda. My touch. Oh my God. The creaminess from the bechamela is everything right now. I cannot wait for everybody to taste it. Everybody to taste it. The whole crew is going to come in here and taste it right now. This is so good. It's so good that we have to go. So thank you for being oh, my you today. It was my pleasure. Mwah. Mwah. We hope to see you pretty soon. And have a good time in Italy. Oh, thank you. I'm going to Italy soon. So. Ciao, everyone. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.